welcome to a new topic we have just finished looking at conceptual dependency theory which was basically a small set of predicates which were used as primitives to represent knowledge and this knowledge was about everyday actions essentially we saw how other verbs in the english language could be translated into conceptual dependency theory we also saw how some inferences could be made in a general manner knowing the semantics of the sentences so for example uh, we knew that if you buy something it means that you are giving some money and getting something in back we know that if you are planning to take an aspirin then most probably it is because you are not unwell or because you are unwell or so that kind of inferences a program called margi could make now we want to look at specific situations which are larger in some sense which require a different a different kind of knowledge representation and that representation is knowledge structures so we start with that this is a recap of what we have said much earlier that uh, if you are hearing a story or a sentence that for example anisha walked into a bookstore or into the bookstore then you generate certain expectations as to what's happening there that's because you know what is a bookstore what happens inside a bookstore and things like that and you can make inferences like anisha will probably browse through the books or maybe she is looking for a specific book and she look for that perhaps she will go to the counter and pay for it and she may emerge with a book in hand so these kind of expectations you will generate now like the programs margi uh, what we are going to look at today is also focus towards understanding stories so the same machinery will be built upon essentially so we use the phrase the phrase knowledge structures to say that how do you put together different pieces of information into one structure essentially how do you know about restaurants or how do you represent knowledge about restaurants or about dental clinics and so on all these are stereotypical situations in which the same kind of thing happens over and over again so in some sense we collect and organize individual bits of facts about the typical knowledge about these entities and we create these aggregated representations roger shank called such structures as scripts marvin minsky called them frames and frames was the idea behind what is popularly now called as object oriented programming systems when we were looking at conceptual dependency we said that our goal is to understand natural language sentences and stories and by making sense we meant that we map it onto some internal representation which in our case happens to be in first order logic but what is more important is that understanding has a top down component it involves concepts driven mapping into pre conceived notions essentially we already know what it means to buy to sell to uh, drive a car and things like that whatever rather than data driven bottom up approach so we don't want to start by looking at sentences and then make sense of them when we we want to be in a position to accept sentences and uh, try to see where they fit in into the knowledge that you already know and that knowledge is what we are trying to now talk about as to how that is represented so that's at the level that we have chosen so they are already aggregations in some sense but we will represent them as individual symbols essentially so as we said at that time we in invent our own concepts in our heads so you know people trees dogs nations organizations and so on what we are going to see now is that with those representations we can do further aggregation and further abstraction so scripts and frames they allow us to represent the abstraction hierarchies that we spoke about 
and I will just show you the picture to remind you of that again, as well as the aggregated aggregation hierarchies. And we do so explicitly now. So now we will have a representation of the whole as well as the representation of the parts that make up the whole and the relations between not only the different parts but also between parts and the whole essentially. This will be explicit now. So here is an example that we had uh, talked about earlier. Uh, we had when we were talking about aggregation. So as you can see, for example, we have this uh, set of elements. So let us say this set of cats. So now this particular element denotes the set of cats or the category of cats or things like that essentially. Then we can have another level of abstraction. We can say that you know cats are mammals. So, so not only are cats mam mammals, but dogs are mammals, horses are mammals, humans are mammals and so on. So all the different categories that we represent at one level can be again abstracted into the higher level category which is mammals. So there came gave the idea of abstraction hierarchies and uh, the idea of taxonomies. So we have already seen for example how description logics allow us to represent uh, taxonomies. We also have this other dimension in which we put together things and uh, call give them a name essentially. That was the aggregation hierarchy. For example, these four elements could be describing some device which has four components and together the four, four components come together and we give it a name, maybe this pen or something like that. We had also seen an example of uh, teams in sports, in particular we were talking about bridge and we saw that uh, a bridge, bridge team is made up of three bridge players which in turn is made up of six bridge players and they, there is a level of abstraction that bridge players are human bridge players and human bridge players are bridge players. At some point nowadays we have computer bridge players, so they are also bridge players and humans are also bridge players. So there are these levels of abstraction that we had spoken about. Some of these things we have learned how to represent in, in description logics. Uh, and some we will see now. So what we are interested in is in frames and in scripts essentially. The idea of semantic nets, we saw that we had this RDF and we had this uh, graph databases with uh, triples being stored in them and that kind of stuff essentially. They, we call them as knowledge graphs, but the original idea was called semantic nets. The idea behind this mode of representation was to link concepts together with labeled edges so that we could easily look for relations between different elements. So if you want to look for related uh, elements, then you have to only follow the labeled links till you find the target concept that you are looking at essentially. The idea of frames which I said were first espoused by Marvin Minsky of MIT is to take this physical proximity one level closer essentially. So not only are we going to link together different elements which are related to each other, though at one level that would also happen, but we reify all those elements and aggregate them into one new representation and encapsulate the related elements into one knowledge structure essentially which he called as frames essentially. We will look at frames a little bit as we go along. And I have said this before as well that this led to the paradigm of object oriented programming. 
because there we have this notion of encapsulation we have the notion of inheritance and you know that kind of stuff of the of the part whole hierarchy can be captured in uh, objects quite independently roger shank developed this idea of scripts essentially which are patterns of events that typically occur in stereotypical situations so we saw we spoke about uh, bookshop uh, one of the favorite things that shank students used to talk about are restaurants what happens typically in a restaurant and we all know what happens in a restaurant and the script was the idea was to capture that into one structure which was like a large data structure at an abstract level so the name script i presume comes from the fact that they were little bit like scripts that are used for plays and and films and in theater and so on in india we have seen that there are certain very well defined patterns well beaten patterns uh, which are called kind of formulas of films which are used to make films so you know every, all the time that you know this is what to expect one difference between minsky's frames and shank's scripts is that minsky's frames were essentially semantic in nature that they talked about uh, the domain and the relations between different elements in the domain whereas shank's scripts they are episodic in nature they talk about episodes as to what happens in typical situations shank's group which was at yale university this happened between the mid 70s to mid 80s uh they explored many other knowledge structures as well we will see a couple of them as we go along but we will begin our study with scripts which is uh, the fundamental contribution which came from that group essentially we mentioned many programs when we were talking about uh, conceptual dependency theory there was a whole string of programs for example eli english language interpreter and so on some of them will come and play a role again here but our focus now is going to be on scripts so with this very short setting of the scene as you might say we will come back to the next video and start talking about scripts